entirely distinct methods. Both of these are very interesting claims to make, very respectable claims to make. All that I think is bad is to mix them up with one another. Do you think that, that in, in the future, in time, I mean, both are purportedly looking into the nature of the universe, right. the, big, the big you, right. everything. Right. Do you think that there's a, a way in which at some point these will converge? Um, I don't see any reason to believe that. I, I think um, so far all of the announcements of this convergence, which are surely all over the place, um, have proven hollow once, once, you, once you look at them. Um, so no, I, I don't see any, indeed, I guess I see the opposite. And I guess I see, and you know, this is another way of putting the point that I was trying to make this morning. For my money, the image of the world and of our place in the world that emerges through science is getting more and more uncomfortable for us as time goes by, is getting farther and farther from the image of us that emerges in the great religious traditions, the great mystical traditions, so on and so forth. We're being presented with a mechanical picture of ourselves by science that we don't know how to take in. And I think the interesting challenge of science to our imaginations is not that it's reproducing other bodies of knowledge that, that we have other kinds of access to, but that it's giving us something altogether different from all of those other traditions, something with an enormous amount of force behind it because of, be, because of the success and the, and the earned authority of the scientific technique, something that it's very hard for us to take in. It's very, very difficult for us to think about ourselves as the kind of mechanical devices that science seems to be telling us that we are. So, no, I don't see evidence of a convergence there. And indeed, what I think is exciting about the scientific project is precisely that uh, the, the way as it goes on, it makes this tension more and more and more acute. Um, um, the tension between the picture of ourselves we have from various other cultural traditions and the picture of ourselves we're getting from science. Once again, if you look at the progress, Galileo took us out of the center of the universe where various religious traditions wanted to put us. Darwin took us out of, uh, out of you know, divine creation where various traditions wanted to put us. Freud displaced us in another way. I think the progress of science has been um, exactly away from convergence with all these traditions. Um, and I think that's what's interesting and challenging about it. If all it was doing was converging with these other traditions, there'd be something redundant about it. If you, let's say, you know, in physics, of course, the Holy Grail is the theory of everything. Mm -hmm. So you would then have to say that it's not the theory of everything, it's the theory of the physical, everything in the physical universe. Yeah, but you might want to add to that that you think you have reason to believe that the physical universe is all the universe there is. Right. Right. Now, but can science ever answer that question? That there is Whether the physical universe is all the, all the universe there is? Yeah. Well, um, um, I'm not sure what it would be to answer that question definitively, but it's imaginable that physics could get to the point, okay, where it could say, look, I have a completely physical explanation of why you just moved your arm. I have a completely physical explanation of why you're now producing the sounds you're producing. I have a completely physical explanation of why you married the person that you did. I have a completely physical explanation of why you wrote all the words in your life that you did. Um, if physics gets to that point, there's going to be more and more of a pressing question of the form. Look, this other stuff you believe in, this non-physical stuff that you believe in, what's it for? What work is it doing in the world? We have a complete account here in terms of physics of everything that seems to be going on, of why you believe, you know, of why to say, you say to people that you believe you have free will. We're going to have a physical account of why you say to people that you believe the world isn't completely physical. Um, 
that's not going to be a proof that the world is completely physical. But it is going to raise a very awkward question for the person who wants to deny physicalism. If physics gets to this point, mind you, I don't know that it will, okay? But if it does, okay, um, um, then, then there's going to be a very acute question of the form, look, this other stuff you believe in, soul or spirit or whatever it is, what does it do? What's it for? We've got the account of everything in terms of the motions of these particles. Okay? We've already established that it's not, make, it's not what makes you say what you say. It's not what makes you write what you write. It's not what makes you marry who you marry. What, what work is it doing? Things could come to that. 